Not your average tabletop. Woohoo! Welcome to Not Your Average Tabletop. I'm Zach. And I'm Pepper. And today we're giving our 10 games that we would turn into movies. Uh, because we are both pretty big fans of movies, I would say. Yeah. You're probably maybe a little bit more of a fan than I am. Uh, but I always enjoy a good movie. I think I think most people would say they do. Yeah. Um, and some probably watch more movies than others. Uh, and this year I think we've got, we've seen quite a few we've movies. We've seen quite a few. <laughs> Which is probably not typical, yeah. Um, but yeah, we definitely like them. So I thought this might be an interesting list to do, because yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes I would say this at least mine didn't really have any rules on how we were doing this or whatever. Uh, but I don't know that I necessarily brought game mechanics into this necessarily uh, for most of these. So yeah. I, I wouldn't say that this is like oh I'm gonna play uh, point salad and we're going mm, to. Yeah score points or what something for make a movie about somehow making those i don't know salads and yeah. scoring certain points for them or something something like that specifically but maybe yeah. so, somewhat close yeah i i try well i obviously tried to stay away from games yeah, that already had ips whether yeah. it's movies or books um, and then there's some that kind of are similar to movies that yeah. are already out there which i I'm guess saying, did you do any of those like there's one there, obvious uh, one uh, where... I, I would say a lot of mine i'd compare them to something that's out there already so. yeah i i try to go more i would like to explore this more versus because mm -hmm. there are very cinematic games i guess yes. i would say and i tried not to make that because i think that's a list of its own where i feel like the game does feel like you are in a movie which would initially make me want to put it on my list because I'm like, oh, that's, and it's like this movie or it's got this sort of theme and I feel like that would really work. But then I'm like, but it's already too cinematic. So there were a lot of those. Okay. So I thought it'd be easier to remove okay. those and well, we'll go see. more. I would like to explore this more while it okay. didn't necessarily appear outwardly cinematic. Well, we'll see if mine fall under what your definition or not uh, but let us know in the comments below what you what games you'd want to see turned into movies or what you would uh, who the cast of these movies yes. would be or any of that if you want in the comments below but otherwise i think i'll just start off i don't have like a specific order to these i just kind of came up with them and then just thought about what kind of maybe a little bit of what i would have uh in the movie and I guess the first one... Like, that okay, so here, the opening shot. The opening gonna... shot. We're going to have a squirrel going across the road. <laughs> oh, um, boy. And that's going to be the starting shot for all of these movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be my go-to thing. I'm going to be known for it. It's going to be a different squirrel every time. <laughs> going to have to catch that. But um, No, I'm doing Merchants of the Dark Road. And this was... This n nearly made my list. <laughs> I was like, just... The cover and the setting and kind of kind of what you're doing, which you'll explain. I just was like, ah, oh, that one would be really cool. Atmosphere. Yeah, yeah I, I think this one definitely would lend itself to uh, being a good potential movie because it's one of those that would, I don't, I, I would think it would probably be a band of misfits probably mm -hmm. in, yep. you know, going around and trading with other people and then running into... Uh, some goons on the road, probably, or, you know, getting into situations. Mm, yeah. Um, and, yeah, I I was, as I was thinking about it more, though, I was almost thinking it would be that in a Christmas theme, because it's, <laughs> uh, I think it'd be snowy and stuff, oh, so yeah. I think people, would, this would be one of those that people are debating whether or not this is a Christmas movie or not, because uh, I think that's about the time I'd have it yeah. set in. Um, and, yeah, I mm. think I would just have a band of probably, like, three or four people, um, all with their, uh, I would say they're all good friends, and maybe we learn a little bit of their backstories and stuff, and, I don't know, one of them is trying to make money or something for, so they can, I don't know, get some, some person in their family some help by Christmas or something. Uh, it doesn't, not necessarily that it has to be yeah. for Christmas, but around that time. Yeah, yeah that, that definitely works. I, I would, I would see it. <laughs> And then you can just go, or they can be traveling in, in circles. circles. <laughs> That's their go to Visiting maneuver. multiple shops at a time. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so my tenure. I feel like I had like five vying for that tenth spot, and they all kind of were just kind of inherently cinematic, kind of thematic. 
uh, gameplay wise, and I just settled on number 10 being Clank, or the Clank system of games, and I feel like there are a lot of movies kind of like that, kind of mm -hmm. exploring a dungeon, trying to get treasure, and um, kind of... Clank treasure is, Hunter Heist. Treasure yeah. Hunter Heist, yeah. And I'm thinking of a vibe similar to the recent Dungeons & Dragons movie, is mm -hmm. kind of what I'm getting from this, especially with Clank kind of having some humor in the cards yeah. as well, and um, throughout the franchise, and... I think it would probably be another band of misfits, which I guess I, Clank is competitive, so yeah. I guess it wouldn't necessarily be a band. A separate individual misfits that probably eventually will have to team up because that's how movies go. Yes, there will be the dragon, um, yeah, some sort of dragon. The dragon I'm sure that they'll have to take on. People going to have to trip and make Clank and make noise, so that's going to definitely happen in the movie. That's and true. We'll wake up something monstrous. Um, but yeah, a nice, light-hearted, not-too-scary dungeon crawler, get the treasure kind of movie. Yes, that that one nearly made my list. Mm -hmm. That was right, right on the edge for me. Um, yeah, that one just missed out but i was i was thinking kind of the same thing um but then i think i ended up having some other ones that mm, yeah. maybe were kind of similar <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> like you said the band or people getting together i feel like that's a very go-to thing is. for probably a lot of these board games <laughs> ever since guardians <laughs> of the galaxy went wild that's everyone's true. trying to capture that magic yes they are um uh, but yeah then uh my next one um is Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Um, and this one would, I think, would be a movie about, uh, probably be the King, Mad King Ludwig's life, or not maybe not his life, but a, a point in time, or many years probably, of him getting more and more mad and having maybe two people competing. I, I don't know exactly what the, how the building of all his castles and stuff went, or how who he had designed them and stuff, but this movie's gonna be like having two people fighting off against each other, um, and I'm sure those two people probably had some history, mm -hmm. uh, yep. so they probably are like bitter rivals. You. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if by the end I'm gonna have them make up though, because that's just kind of the trope. It so, is the trope. Um, I guess you'll have to watch to find out. You'll have to watch to find out. But yeah, it's just going to be a competition. They're going to be coming up with these crazy designs. I don't know that they're ever going to actually make the castle. I think they have to submit kind of their designs to... Uh, You're not going to have them make the castle and uh, see all these wacky rooms? I suppose you could have that. What's and the then, point? Just all oh, the true. idea. You could have, you could have, you could have many oh, wacky rooms. I could room. put a puppy room in there, but that's you're never going to see have the puppies. Build the I'll have them build the castle, and then they're going to kind of decorate the rooms with these weird rooms, and then bring him through and kind of get his reaction. And he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't like this. And, um, yeah, it's just going to be changing things up and stuff and having some corridors sometimes and um maybe some of the you know some of those things where if you've played the game you kind of yeah. uh, you're like in the know of oh yeah that that's a not uh, something in the game or whatever but yeah yeah that you you've, you've won me over <laughs> initially i was like yeah i'm not sure if that works but that that really would work okay and my next one is i feel like the there's a few different genres. I think more of the adventure, clank type of games that I found, and then there were other cutesy ones that I'm like, well, there's an animated movie right there, and this was Sushi Go Party, or the line of sushi <laughs> games. I'm like, those little sushis are so adorable, they deserve to be made into an animated movie, and given characters, and given wonderful voices, and I don't know what story. And it's always weird when it's food, and it's like, wait, so do they get eaten and killed? But don't think about that. They've got their adventure. They are food, but they never die. They never get eaten or spoil. Never. Never, never ever. Never, ever. Yeah, this is just it's cute, and I'm like, I would like to see those characters animated. Yeah. That is a good choice. I didn't come up with big, long stories like yourself. <laughs> I, I'm not going to have big stories for all of these. Um, but my next one might have a story. Um, and that'll be Viticulture slash Viticulture World. Uh, and this will be a rom-com. Oh, a rom-com. Um, yes, they will. So there's going to be two main characters. 
um, who are both equally, we'll say. Um, maybe, I don't know. They have... It's the typical rom-com where it's got the goofy guy and the, other, the woman that's just... <laughs> Had it, but doesn't even doesn't like anything about this guy initially, and then you know they grow to have a relationship, uh, but they they somehow have a vineyard inherited or given uh. passed down to them after someone dies. For some reason, they split it fifty fifty. I don't know why, because these two characters never met before. Unlike Wait, a lot so of, so it's a rom com between relatives <laughs> that were handed down. No, 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 no. They're not relatives. That, that's the weirdest long, part about long it. Long, long ago relatives. No, that's the weirdest part about it. They handed it off because the, the people that died had no heirs or relatives, so then it got split between maybe both their friends oh, or something. I see. Or something like that. And then, yeah, it's 50-50, and maybe we have... Some, maybe both of them had, like, careers in something that would help them with certain oh, okay. parts of the business, but the parts of the business that were split were, like, flipped from what it mm, should have been, yeah. um, and then they end up getting together eventually. Yeah. Wine always helps. That Wine always helps. And by the end, they're also making chocolate. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know why, but they are. Wow. Interesting. Okay. He didn't like that one as no, much. No, I, I like that one. It just took a while for the wine to even kick. <laughs> just like, okay, rom-com, and then what? where does the vineyard come in? <laughs> They're going to get there. They get there. Well, and, first off, we start off with a scene of a squirrel crossing the road. Oh, that's right. How did that tie into this and the previous one? That's what I'm wondering. Oh, boy. The squirrel is looking between the two castles. and Which one should I visit? My number eight... <laughs> is a series of movies, um, currently two movies, a movie and then its prequel, because that is how the games were released, and that is In the Hall and Fall of the Mountain King. And these are just universes that I want to explore. The games themselves, are, I guess there are exciting bits in them, more in Fall of the Mountain King, where there are actually kind of combat going on, where <laughs> it's a little more obvious as to kind of what a type of movie it would be, but um, just this world where there was this mountain king and was overthrown. I guess I haven't actually read kind of the setting for it very much, but that just seems like a really cool world and universe to explore. I really love the artwork in that, even though obviously... It wouldn't be the artwork unless it was animated and they got them to animate it, but I don't know. just felt like a really cool world to go into. It gives me a little feel of Lord of the Rings type of thing, mm -hmm. um, which I don't think overall it would feel that much like that, but right. uh, just a little bit. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that. Uh, but my next one is going to be my first animated film. Oh, boy. And this will be a fox in the forest. Oh, and it'll start yeah. with a squirrel crossing the road. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> but this time it will be a robot squirrel. No. <laughs> no. This will just be an animated <laughs> animated film about a fox in the forest. He's very lonely, um, which is unfortunate for him because he's got no other foxes around him. Um, yeah, so he's searching far far and wide for um, find his mate and he runs into other uh, creatures um, kind of uh, or people or whatever the other ones on the cards and stuff uh, that have the special powers he'll run oh, into yeah. all of them and they'll help him in various ways and eventually he will find he will find another fox and then that and they'll get together right at the very end of the movie although they won't I don't think they'll be officially in a relationship but then we'll have the sequel, Fox and the Forest duet, where we will test their relationship and bring that to the next level by the end, probably. That sounds good. It writes itself. It does. My goodness. Get on it, Disney or Pixar. Get on <laughs> it. Ooh, Renegade makes those. Renegade makes that game. Get on it. Renegade and Disney team up. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. I, was, I didn't think of that. I looked in the small drawer for small games, but I didn't, didn't think of Fox that... That checks the vibe, I think. I think it does. 
Okay, another one, which is kind of a mix of the Mountain King and the Fox in the Forest, and that is Bunny Kingdom. This is, this is, this is probably higher. I didn't actually rank these. This probably should be near number one. Uh, I absolutely love Bunny Kingdom, and one of the things I love most is the artwork, and especially the parchment cards where you get to see all these different positions within the kingdom, and each rabbit having its outfit and gear, and some of them are... Um, armored up with swords and they're really epic and some of them have different jobs that aren't as cool but still have a lot of character to them and it is a world so this is one of the ones where it's like it's not really like cinematic initially but it is a world that I would really love to explore in a probably animated film where there could be a squirrel yes that was that was another it was I think those were kind of buying for my 10th spot were Clank and Bunny Kingdom. Oh, yeah. Those are both two that missed out. Um, just because there may or may not be some other animal ones mm -hmm. in mind. And I'm, uh, well, Clank's not animals, yeah. but yeah, it's, it just felt similar to some of the other ones I had, and then this one felt similar. Um, but yeah, that's a good pick. I was thinking of it myself. And then, obviously, the... You couldn't find a way to fit prequel, the in there. The prequel, or you could maybe have it be a sequel oh. of this In the Sky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, would fit perfectly. Yeah. Everyone would love that. Um, but yeah, so then my next one, um, I think this one might be a mini series. I don't know. That's just the feeling I have for this, because <laughs> I don't know exactly what I'd want to do with it. But mm, yeah. uh, too many bones. Uh, oh, the one yeah. that I was thinking. I figured you could kind of follow one of those characters, um, and then just have them kind of have episodic things, things that they do go missions that they go on kind of and it better their skills and come up with new abilities and yeah. powers as they go on um and maybe have a companion here and there but i think they i don't think that it would just be like a growing group i think it would be someone that they might team with for a little bit and mm -hmm. then go back yeah. to themselves for an episode or something yeah. and then maybe like the finale if it was like a 10 episode thing or something oh, yeah. maybe then all of the people that they've met up with kind of are there and team up for yeah. one final battle or something going on. Um, and then, you know, see how that goes and maybe have another another season or something. Yeah, just cover all the playable characters. Yes. <laughs> Get Surprise. on that chip theory. Seems, seems like a ragtag band of... A uh, misfits type of <laughs> type of movie. It, it does. should be, but he's going solo. Just a solo character. I, I think so because, eh, as you see, we've got too yeah. many ragtag bands. Yeah, we don't we need do. them to be that the whole time. We do. Okay, let's see. Where's? I don't know if I have any more ragtag bands here, <laughs> but I do have a universe of of movies. A cinematic universe. Oh boy. Um, because it is the Oniverse uh, series of games, and these are solo games. They can be two-player, but mostly solo games, <laughs> That series that I enjoy quite a bit. And eat, the artwork is a consistent style throughout that kind of ties them all together, and each one is kind of covering, a, I assume, a different aspect of the universe that um, the designer and artist has in their head and there's different baddies different monsters and different missions to accomplish like i think one of them you're building airships to go and take off and escape um, and one of them you're traveling through the sea to a bad bad ship's base and he's trying to get to your base and i'm like there's a bunch of different parts to this universe that i would be interested in seeing them explored more and feel like I've only been teased a little bit because it's not like they're overly thematic games they just you can tell that there is a universe there that uh, <laughs> was thought about yeah interesting I didn't I didn't really think of that one and I don't know if that would make my list but eh, it could be interesting I'd definitely definitely be a cinematic universe <laughs> I'd be ever growing um, but yeah we could go to my next one here, and um, this one might be a little bit of a cheat. A, a little bit of a cheat. I think it's my closest one to already being kind of oh. could turn it straight into kind of a movie because he's already got kind of storylines. Um, and that's Forgotten Water slash Freelancers. Um, it's a game I really, really love, and 
I'd highly recommend it if you are looking for something that is very story driven. Um, and yeah, I just like the stories that I've gone through, especially in Forgotten Waters. I've only played Freelancers yeah. once, but it's kind of a similar th thing. Uh, Forgotten Waters, though, um, I like pirate themed things in general. And I feel like outside of Pirates of the Caribbean, I don't know of that many pirate yeah. movies. Um, although Pirates of the Caribbean is really great, so uh, that might be hard to outdo. It's kind of like Jurassic Park. There's just not really been any competitors. Yeah, that's the tough part. Um, but this would probably end up being a band of misfits mm -hmm. again. <laughs> so uh, it's usually, I, I feel like when they do do pirates and stuff in movies, yeah. it's almost always that kind yeah. of crew. Um, but maybe this one could be different. You could have a family of pirates. Uh, a family of misfits. Exactly. Exactly. No, they're all the same character. They're exactly the same. This one, the squirrel's actually crossing a bridge. Oh, my God. He's not <laughs> walking the plank? No. <laughs> we thought about it, but then we thought that would be too tragic for the yeah, squirrel. Yeah, we didn't know if he could swim. So Maybe he's a flying squirrel. He was. No, okay. Now I take that back. He is going to walk the plank, and he's going to jump off. And after all this time, we're going to... People have been speculating after all these other movies and stuff. He is a flying squirrel, so he's going to be able to fly, <laughs> glide across the water and not worry about anything. Uh, wow. This 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 is the cinematic universe of the squirrel. It is. Oh, boy. My next one. Let's go. Let's go water-themed again. Boat-themed. This is um, kind of two games in one. It is two games. and But they are in the same universe. And that is Isle of Cats and Race to the Raft. And the kind of story is just cats having to escape this island before either Vesh uh, arrives to do whatever bad things he does. We're not going to get too descriptive because it's probably a family movie, animated movie. Mm -hmm. um, but then Race to the Raft, they're lava in that one. Like, yeah, fire, uh, lava Wait, or that's, fire. That's not consistent at all. I thought there was a bad guy coming, or is he causing this lava? He's probably it might be It might be fire, and he might be causing be. it. I don't okay. remember. So it might be, but um, that kind of makes me think about Jurassic World, Fallen yeah. Kingdom, yeah. where kind of the the island is uh, erupting, and you have to get all these. Dinosaurs love it's pretty much the same thing. It's going to be the same um, story, and they're going to be selling off cats for yes, lots of money. They are. They will. Um, but yeah, that is yes, genetically modified cats for war. <laughs> After starting we'll probably, as a family. We'll problem. probably drop that plot point. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I just think another animated one. Get some awesome cat characters voiced mm -hmm. by some popular at the time stars all the currently famous probably aquafina will be a cat probably jack black maybe jack black could be the villain i guess that seems uh, like i doing think that he'd now. be the villain yeah that seems about right that's about what i would think vesh would sound like uh, so i think be singing that's good... songs he's gonna be singing songs about cats stand back peaches <laughs> <laughs> here comes his performance in cats Oh, boy. Well, let's go to my next one here. And since it's already been mentioned, this one probably would be pretty high on my list, but it has been mentioned, so uh, instead of saving it, I'll just say it now. Yeah. Uh, I would also have Fall and Hall of the Mountain King as an epic fantasy series, um, but I would also throw in there non-related Whistle Mountain. So, Whistle Mountain? Uh, it would be like a sequel. And the then all of a sudden, these dwarves, that's what they are, right? Yeah. They would leave the... So we've got the initial fall of the Mountain King, and then we've, they're, we're making a haul, and then we're leaving the mountain in these airships and trying to build on the outside. Uh, <laughs> so that's the third one in this trilogy. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it could be the first one. I don't know. Maybe they could have started outside and then they had to go back into after okay. some tragic thing happened. Maybe okay. I actually like that a lot better now that I think about it. It starts off like that, and then it gets dark because <laughs> some people come and attack. Well, the gnomes come and attack. Uh, I yeah. think that's right. It's gnomes that are attacking yeah, so, yeah. a troll. No, 
What is it? Mm -hmm. I think it is gnomes. Whatever Probably. it is that's attacking. Um, yeah, they could just have a bustling economy. Great. You know, they've got using the river and whistle. <laughs> mountain blimps and balloons. Using blimps. You know, things that you Technology. wouldn't usually, you wouldn't think of when you're thinking of these guys. Mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting combination. And then you know, something terrible happens and they're pushed into the, into the, mountain. into the mountains. Um, and then, yeah, the, I would say the fall of the mountain king has kind of maybe introduced some leaders of different clans and stuff, so then you could have a bunch yeah. of cool characters, and like you said, a bunch of top-notch voice actors at a time, yeah. probably, uh, would play some of these characters, and yeah, I think it could be could be the next Lord of the Rings. You heard it here. I think it's got a chance. <laughs> it's got a chance. Taking this board game series and this other board game, putting them together into a trilogy... <laughs> Of films with budgets of 300 million plus. <laughs> it's worth the risk. <laughs> Anything to get Robert Downey Jr. There we go. <laughs> I can't imagine him as... Maybe he's the narrator telling the story. He might I be. I can see that. I can't see him as a as a character, no, as a troll. That voice does not work. No. Maybe... A, Who could be? Maybe a... Jack Black for bringing him back. <laughs> Jack Black as every troll in the world. <laughs> Different voices for all of them. Okay, so let's go with... I'll probably do this one next. I feel like I have least amount of theme from this, but another epic fantasy film that I think needs the universe explored. That is Dwellings of Eldervale. This one it just it just writes itself. What is what is the theme? You're going back to this land, or whatever. It's got all these resources, and you're putting out your dwellings there, and you're fighting each other for this land, and you're fighting, or for the, I guess what are they called? The re the tracks. Like elements. The difference. The element. Elemental powers, whatever they are. You're fighting for control of these, and there's elemental beasts as well springing up and fighting you as well, and fighting each other, and that's just... What more could you want from an epic movie? What more could you want? You get a little Godzilla vs. Kong and the battling beast, and I probably should say this is sounding better and better now that I'm going through it. My number three is also Dwellings of oh, Eldervale. <laughs> I've also been saving that one. I didn't know if you would think of that one, but yeah, I, I guess I was thinking more of... Based on those elements, you could have like the different different factions. Kind oh, of yeah. feel a little bit like uh, Avatar, the Last no. Airbender. Um, but yeah, you've got all those different ones, and they maybe can do different things better mm -hmm. than others based on whatever their element is. And they've got their own. Um, maybe those could be their champions, and yeah. that's who whoever wins like this great battle or whatever is the ones that are put in charge for that this next Avatar whatever year. And Hunger Games. Mesh together. Yes, it could be. Those elemental beasts that you're talking about. What's oh, sorry, what was and yours? And where to find them. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I, I think you could do a lot of different things with that yeah. story, uh, for sure. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you could take it and do very different, a lot of different things. Like yeah. you said, you could be, because, yeah, I would say that mine isn't very much dwelling the land or putting yeah. out, it's kind of already pre-built yeah, I mean, at that point, but you could. I mean, yeah, it wouldn't be all about that, but, yeah, I think it's probably better to. We're going to make a franchise out of this, obviously, and kind right. of focus, start. On, focus on the different factions, for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I think, yeah, you'd start small and build up your, maybe you do what have dwellings and stuff, and then yeah. kind of, yeah, taking over bits of land and stuff yeah. for your um, elemental. What, what, what element would be the main character? Oh, I, main I have character. one. I have one in my mind that I think it probably should be. Uh, I'm trying to remember what are all in that game. Um, I'm not really sure. Is there like a water one? I don't know. There is water. There is water. I think there's water, air... I was thinking like storm one. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> it could be. What were you thinking? I, I was just thinking the friendly... Uh, Earth ones, the green, and I'm like, their yeah, their yeah. monsters seem pretty friendly. And That's I true. feel like they could use those monsters on their side instead of fight against them. Um, I thought that's probably the down to earth Earth tribe. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair to cheer um, for. <laughs> that would be pretty good. Yeah. Gotta make it happen, man. Gotta make it happen. 
Okay, so now it's my three. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll. This one probably. This one already has a TV show. It has different movies in this universe or genre, and that is Lovecraftian uh, themed things. And this is Cthulhu Death May Die. Uh, just Lovecraft stuff by itself. Well, I've seen a few movies with it, and I enjoy them, and decently interested for you know a scary movie. What I love about Cthulhu Death May Die is just how crazy it is and how overpowered and mad you go as your characters. As you get closer and closer to death, you get more and more powerful and insane and the characters are really brought to life with their quotes and their backstories and their artwork and what you're doing in the game, just chucking a bunch of dice chaotically and using items and blowing up everything in your space. You probably, you, if you, if you're a big fan of us, you probably heard the, <laughs> the great story of uh, I was running around, I was, I was dead because I was so close to death, and the way it was, that was going to be my last turn. So I ran around the whole map, and monsters always follow you in this game. Great mechanism, and so I was gathering everything up, and and we were in the same space, and you handed me some items, um, and I went into the next space and used those to create an explosive. And blow up, killing <laughs> everything in my space, including myself. <laughs> and then you went on to then defeat the big bad. Yes. And win it. And I'm like, that is just cinematic gameplay. Yes. Make it with the same vibe. Not super messed up horror, disturbing stuff, but mm -hmm. somewhat lighthearted. If you can keep that in there, I'd want to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that sounds pretty good. I would, I would like that quite a bit. But, I mean, that's also kind of cheating, since they do kind of that's present true. it in episodes and stories. So yeah. I tried to shy away from, like, campaigns and things like that, where they already inherently have a story. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, that's a little too easy, but... Yeah, I'd say this one's not really yeah. directly written, but, yeah, you yeah. could have some of the characters yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it's a good pick. Uh, my next pick, uh, you don't like the game or the show that I'm going to compare it to. Yeah, that much. So, um, this one is Root. Um, yeah. And for this, I'm thinking a Game of Thrones-esque um, kind of plot. Uh, where, yeah, there's going to be some kind of factions that are maybe working together, have alliances at times. Um, and then there's going to be, yeah, others that, um, yeah, just have long-term family rivalries going on for decades and ages you're going to get to know them all um this one could either be kind of you know seasons like game of thrones or um just i guess it could be several movies maybe yeah. too um but i think that this would follow the vagabond um mm, yeah. kind of just being a, an observer maybe yeah. more than anything and um could just have you know maybe allies in almost every um, group, so you can kind of maybe see there are good parts to oh, each yeah. group and stuff, uh, along with maybe the bad parts. So you can kind of see both sides of, yeah. you know, this is maybe, <laughs> you know, I don't always love this in movies where it's like, oh, well, this is why they're the way they are or whatever, and and maybe, <laughs> you know, usually if you have a group of people, there's going to be some good ones yeah. in there. They're not all, even if overall there might not be the best. There's going to be some in there that yeah. aren't, so... He could maybe be friendly with those people and interact with those. Um, but then, yeah, and then you're going to have, obviously, times where maybe he's not involved and there are fights going on yeah. amongst them. Um, but then, like, backstabbing and stuff. I, I think Root feels like it could be that kind of thing. Kind of a woodland creature yeah, fight like I, that. So. I, I, I thought of this one, and this one was... I was like, this one definitely does feel like it could be that, but I was pretty dang sure it was going to be on your list, so I didn't put it on mine. But if you didn't mention that, I was definitely going to mention that one, because that, it does feel like that kind of that kind of show, I guess. How serious and brutal would it be? Would it be as brutal as Game of Thrones? Because these are animals we're talking about, and people aren't going to want to watch that. Yeah, I don't think it'll be as brutal. Um, I, I think it'll be a little bit more friendly. Um, just be... <laughs> Yeah, I think it'd be a little bit more friendly, but I think there'd still be conflict in some, yeah. you know, I don't think it would be, I don't even know what classifies ratings anymore or whatever. Yeah. It it might still be like rated R or close oh, to that, yeah. but I, I don't know exactly. 
how far it would go, but I don't I don't know technically what the difference is between or yeah. what would be PG thirteen yeah, versus rated R. Yeah, it's hard to tell because yeah. I feel like that's maybe changed over yeah. even the last ten yeah. twenty years. Gonna, so. so it's going to take itself seriously. Pretty I think seriously. so. Yeah. I think it's going to still be yeah, pretty serious. Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah it's going to be. They're going to feel like they're stakes. My number two, talking about stakes, how about a trophy, a championship that they are racing to win in this game, which could be like a hundred different games. <laughs> and this is an animated movie with a bunch of wacky looking animal characters that are cubes. <laughs> this is Cubitos, oh, the what? animated film. <laughs> and I'm like, when I was thinking of kind of that genre of Okay, what games kind of fall into this one? I'm like, this is definitely the most likely to be a movie. Racing, cube, funny-looking colored animals. This has got to be. This has got to <laughs> be made into a movie. That would and, be a pretty good one. And I would I would like to see it. I mean, I don't see all that many animated movies, but when I do watch them, I actually enjoy them quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and I feel like this one is right up the alley with all the classics. Yeah, I, I think that, that would definitely good, have potential of being pretty good. Good ensemble cast, voice cast. Jack Black's got to be in there, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's a good choice. I didn't even think about that one, but that would be a good animated one for sure. Um, but yeah, that's definitely what it would be, though. I think I don't know if it could be much else. I think it would be... I mean, it could be a serious racing film, but yeah, it's, I think it's kind of hard yeah, to do a serious be. racing film yeah. if it's animals. Yes. Or yeah, weirdly shaped weirdly. cubic animals. <laughs> right. That would Taking be tough. Very to... dead serious. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. You never know. You never know. Uh, but yeah, I think we're already to our top ones yeah. here, um, and this one, like all others, starts off squirrel <laughs> crossing oh, the road. Um, <laughs> although in this one it's an animated squirrel it's animated in the style of arcane i would say oh boy uh, squirrel is running running and then he runs into what does he run into pepper sherlock holmes <laughs> he does not run into sherlock holmes unfortunately it's close but he runs into a bear into a bear a bear oh, named yeah. loshek Oh, yes, of course, <laughs> of course. <Yeah>. And <laughs> and this would be size slash expeditions. It could be a mm, full yeah. series on that. Um, yeah, the 1920s world, I, I would just really like to see that as some sort. It could be, it doesn't have to be a series like Arcane, but it could be a film like that as yeah. well. Um, and I think there's a lot of ways you could take that. You could follow different characters. I think I'd probably have them, though, follow that uh, Anna, is it Anna and Wilczek? No, whichever, sure. whichever faction that is, I probably messed the names up, but um, I think that would be pretty cool. And then the expeditions bringing kind of these falling meteors uh, yeah. um, and kind of being able to use what comes from them to maybe become more powerful and stuff. I just like the thought of that, and you know they're yeah. using kind of these bright colors, which kind of makes me think yeah. a lot of that because it's kind yeah. of a kind of a dirtier, darker world yeah. at first. Yeah, it but definitely then does. Kind of got that. You bring that in, it does have a lot of arcane vibe to it, right? Um, and then, and then at the maybe very end, uh, when we're hinting at the oh, next boy. sequel or season or whatever it is. A bird. All of a sudden, just like the cover of Expeditions, the little squirrel that's been sitting around. I think it's a squirrel on Expedition cover. It might be some other rodent. But all oh of a sudden, boy. a tentacle comes out. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Just leaving leaving us there in that Cthulhu possibility. <laughs> Cross over no one Cthulhu saw that die. coming. <laughs> Wow, yeah. This is another one that I'm like, okay, Zach's probably going to have sight. I forgot about it <laughs> throughout this list. I should have definitely figured that out. But I didn't know there was a squirrel on the cover of Expeditions. This was all planned, I see. <laughs> it actually wasn't. And I'm not even sure if it is a squirrel, but it is some rodent. It is now. It, it is. It was always the plan. <laughs> it's just, it's kind of crazy how that all worked out, but it did. Wow. Yeah, definitely. It, I think that is a universe that. Pretty much everyone who likes Scythe really enjoys the universe, and 
everyone's been asking for more in that universe, I think they would definitely dig uh, a TV show. Although, <laughs> if it is a different art style, I don't know what people's thoughts would be, because I know that that is a big part of the world, and it's kind of based around the art style originally, I think. Mm. Something yeah, like so. that. Um, yeah, that's true, if it just went to that. Um, yeah, I, know, I think there's a video game called Iron Harvest or something that is based in the world. Um, and, and I think if, if they just kept it that artwork too, it'd probably still be good as well, because I think that's kind of what they use. They use pretty much the same uh, look. Um, so, And yeah, I think it probably would still be that art style versus kind of arcane, because I think the person that did the art is, obviously, I think he owns the world, so I don't oh, think yeah. I don't think he would give up since he's mm, the one doing yeah. the art, I don't think he'd give up the rights to the artwork. Mm, yeah. Uh, money talks, so <laughs> at some price he might, but I don't know. If, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. Hopefully someday. Yeah. If there was any game to be made into a movie that wasn't like based on an IP already, I, I feel like that's probably one of the top contenders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so my number one, I may have given it away when I thought that squirrel was running into Sherlock Holmes. Oh boy. My number one is a game that I thought about it a little bit, I'm like, does that, would that work? And that is Unmatched. The Unmatched game system, and I'm like, ah, there's just, because it has movie characters, it has mm -hmm. uh, literary characters, it has all these legends, all these things, and I'm like, how could that work? And I'm like, Night at the Museum. That's the vibe that this has to go for. And I'm thinking it's probably... Ben Stiller's coming back? Ben Stiller's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this would be, it's not a Night at the Museum film, but um, probably that. And I was also thinking, what is it, Ready Player One? Have you seen that? I think they have, uh, they're playing a virtual game in there to try to win some sort of prize and wh whoever made that film had rights to dang near every video game known to man so there's a ton of easter eggs and different characters from different universes showing up and i think that you could have some sort of futuristic combat kind of game that people play and they choose their characters which would be the set of characters from unmatched and then they have them fight uh, each other in maybe tournaments and if you want to know watch an unmatched tournament you can check out our unnamed unmatched tournament that we did in 2023 go check out all like 32 of those videos um, yes but yeah then i think you could have a little bit of night at the museum where one of the people kind of actually gets to know some of the characters that are fighting and um like get to know king arthur and then it's kind of weird interactions because obviously they're not in this modern world, they don't know all this stuff, and I feel like that could be. That could be really cool. Pro probably the best way that you could handle it, because it's such That's a true. weird game to that make true. a movie about. And then you'd have them on different battlefields, and they'd yeah. be like, "Oh, where am I? What is this kind of?" That'd be pretty cool. That'd be interesting to see. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. I guess there have been some YouTube videos where they're like, "Oh, super villain battle." I forget oh, who made yeah. those, but I guess yeah, it'd be kind of similar to that. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see that as a, a an actual film. They'd have to get a lot of rights. Cool. That would take a lot. <laughs> <That's the laughs> that would be, be the tough part. <laughs> yeah, but they might get be yeah, able to get some. Get I guess some. I don't know how. Yeah. Yeah, they could go. They don't have to go with. You'd have what's, to get every single yeah. person in there. Yep. Um, but yeah. Uh, so those are the ten movies that or ten ten movies we turn into yeah. games. Yeah. No, <laughs> ten ten games we would turn into some sort of cinema. That's the um, that's the other list we got to make. There we go. That'd be a the little harder. <laughs> that is a little bit tougher. Uh, but yeah, let us know, like I said in the comments below, what ones you'd like to see turned into some sort of uh, cinema, uh, yeah. whether it be a series or movie or whatever it may be. Let us know. We'd love to hear it. Um, but yeah, otherwise, that's all we got for you this time. And uh, we hope to see you on our other videos. And as always, don't forget to keep on nibbling on our content.